Welcome to the Addiction Connection podcast, connecting the hope of the gospel, the art of addiction. I'm Mark Shaw. I've got CJ McMurray and Lou Samaritano. I'm getting better at pronouncing it. Samar- Samaritano. Am I saying it right, Lou? Perfect. I don't think that's perfect. <laughs> the second time. Yeah, Samaritano. It's, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Well, well, we're going to talk about respectable sins today, and CJ's going to read a few of my favorite verses from 1 John 2. So take it away, CJ McMurray. All right. So it's 1 John uh, chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Amen. So forever starts today. Isn't that a neat thought? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And now, Lou, tell us a little bit about your ministry. You're no stranger to the podcast, but it's been a long time. Yes. I was just looking uh, Facebook. You know, Facebook reminded me four years ago, I had Justin Lockemacher on the podcast. And I thought, four years? And I haven't, I don't think I've had him on since, maybe yeah. once since. And you're that guy too. Like yeah. we did it maybe pre COVID. You think- and I were on a few yeah. times. Yeah. And then, yeah. then we just kind of dropped off. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm a, a full-time biblical counselor in New York, in the very, uh, the Bible Belt of New York here, right? No, not quite. But this is, I think I'm the only one in New York that actually does full-time biblical counseling. And I deal with, you know, everything from addictions to anxieties, do a lot of marriage counseling. And again, it's interesting, it all, mm-hmm. all these things um, are part of these struggles. You know, again, if you have self-pity, a sense of entitlement, if you have anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, it could drive you to yes, drink. Yes. Right? It could certainly, it's going to mm-hmm. certainly have an effect on your marriage. Um, you know, if you're mm-hmm. uh, wanting, wanting to control, that's another respectable sin, wanting to control, you're going to probably be an anxious person, mm-hmm. right? So things like that. So mm-hmm. it's, it's so right. interesting because it's the same, different problems, but the solution is the same. Or, or different manifestations mm-hmm. of problems, but ultimately yes. the root is the same, right? They're just growing up in different ways in a variety. That's of right. Ways. And so it, it is amazing how biblical kind. Of, it's not like it's um, you know, it's all these these multitude of sins just manifest different. So you have to get to the core issue, and that's what's so different about biblical counseling. You know, you want to deal with what's the root. Yes. We know the fruit. The fruit, we could chop the fruit off, okay? We can get you to stop being angry for a while. Mm-hmm. Give you three tips on how not to do that, right? You know, count ten to, count, right. count to ten and uh, walk outside right. and walk around the block a couple of times. But you're not going to get with the root, you know, what the root is. You have to get to the root. Well, the, the addiction world understands, like, the big sins, you know, mm-hmm. the adultery, you know, that kind of thing. But what we're talking about today are the more subtle sins with Jerry Bridges, his book, The Res- Respectable Sin, right? Yeah. Didn't didn't he write the book, Respectable yes, Sin? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. And so we're talking about... So, Lou, inter- introduce us to that concept, if you would. Sure, I'd, I'd love to. Um, of, you know, I think as Christians, it's easy for us to condemn those, you know, flagrant sins of the world. We look at the world and we see... You know, especially today, I mean, it's so out of hand, homosexuality, transgender, you know, we, we see adultery that that is, you know, celebrated on TV and the movies and uh, even, again, these other sins that uh, clearly, uh, but we forget that sin like gossip and pride and envy and bitterness, uh, you know, things of that nature, complaining, ungratefulness, uh, things that impatience. Um, anger, unrighteous anger. There's so many sins that we just feel that, that we're okay doing because not only do we do them very comfortably, we see those in our churches doing them. So uh, when I read his book, I said, we need to talk about that. So I did a whole, um, I think, 
13 uh, part series in our Sunday school. And it was really embraced. And I did find very interesting, there was a lot of pushback. Because, you know, oh, yeah, it's, you know, but, you know, is it a right to gossip? Like everybody, we want to get as close to the line, I find, as we can. You know, it's, well, yeah. how about if you're just talking about this? And how about if you're just doing that? Well, isn't it a right to complain a little bit? And, you know, well, the psalmist complained to God. And, yeah, it's the bottom line is we, we tend to want to uh, minimize uh, sin. So we minimize sin. Uh, one guy said this, it seems like the very word sin, which seems to have disappeared, was once a proud word. It was once, it was once a strong word, an ominous and serious word. But the word went away. It has almost disappeared. The word along, along with the notion, why does anyone sin anymore? Doesn't anyone sin anymore? Doesn't anyone believe in sin? And again, it's not just the flagrant sins of the world. It's the sins that we commit. And again, we, if we look at the world, and you'll notice what often in church gatherings, oh, did you see what they did? Did you see what the president did? Did you see what the vice, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. and, and, and the world around us, what they're doing. And those are realities. But there's sins that we tolerate. And I think we need to really consider those sins are still sins. If we didn't commit any of those so-called heinous crimes, but we gossiped and we didn't love our neighbor and we're ungrateful and we're complaining, those sins, our sins, put people, uh, Christ on the cross, right? I mean, Christ died for those sins. Amen. Well, it's, it is, and our our lead pastor back here at Redeemer, Jason Gerwell, he's always talking about the the Las Vegas sins, right? You know, those are the ones that kind of make the paper and make the headlines, but it's the it's all those other, like you said, the respectable sins that really lead to the the Las Vegas sins, the big sins, you know. Yeah, yeah. All sin, bottom that's line. a very good. That's a very good point. Yeah. All, they you know, always, lustful looks can lead to pornography. pornography right. Can lead to adultery and so on and so forth. Yeah. Right. I'm sure you guys both know as being in the addiction ministry. How does it begin? It doesn't begin when somebody goes mm -hmm. out, boom. It's and then there's a lot of those sins, you know. How about self pity? Yeah. Talk about right. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Uh yeah. sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. Right. Um uh, how to addiction proof your children. I think uh, somebody wrote a book on that. I remember. Yeah, that. I think somebody did. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, the, you know, self pity, sense of entitlement, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. uh, not only are they evil in themselves, they lead to <clears throat> even worse and worse sins. Right. More flagrant, heinous sins. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think they are. Yeah, that's a great point. That's what. That's what Harry Reader at Briarwood, he passed yeah, away. Yeah, I know. I mean, you say passed away, he died. He, uh, he would talk about Lot in the Bible. You read about Lot in Genesis, and he's looking toward the area that is Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Then the next thing you learn about Lot, a little later in the Bible, he pitches his tent to where he's looking and living closer to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then you read that he's, not only living in Sodom and Gomorrah, but he's sitting in the gate, which means he's part of the 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 legal, the the political strat. Yeah. I mean, like he's not in just a citizen; he's like yeah. all in and in the, the strata of it. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very good, very good. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking uh, actually the first sin I think that Bridges uh, spoke about in his book was ungodliness, which is interesting because often mm. now again this is his take on it. And whether you agree with it or not, the word itself, but the reality of sometimes we're just not thinking about God. And I think, CJ, we were talking about mm. before uh, we started this, that often we go through life, going through the day, and we're not thinking about God. We're not praying to God. We're not seeking to mm. glorify God. So Bridges says it's different than unrighteousness, ungodliness. Right. It's just a, it's like a spiritual amnesia, forgetting that we need him, uh, forgetting that we are called to live for him, forgetting right. all the blessings we have are from him, all the abilities. We have no thought of God or God's will or God's glory or even our dependence on God sometimes. And that's that's a sinful way to live. Right. And I remember bringing this up again in our in our church, and people, there was a pushback there. Oh, well, you can't think about God. Right. You know, that kind of thing, you know. And uh, 
which shows that we maybe hit a nerve a little bit, right? Because mm -hmm. you want to protect That's yourself, right. right? Oh, yeah. What do you guys think sometimes in your, what, I mean, I think this is good, and I just have to throw, out, throw this question out. Yeah, sure. In your churches or in your church experiences in life, you guys have been in church longer than I have, right? I, I've only got about, I'd probably say, really legitimate since 2010, about 14 years of church experience. Uh, but I've seen a lot of times where, like, say, whether it's drug issues, alcohol issues, alcohol and drug-related issues, or, uh, like, adultery or some of that, like, that stuff is really kind of, the church usually deals with that stuff quickly. Um, they're going to get involved quickly. But there's a lot of other things that seem to kind of get, you know, overlooked or, you know, even just somebody, uh, you know, like impatience, like you had kind of brought that up or, yeah, yeah. or anger or, you know, I mean, I battled, like I haven't had a desire to use drugs or alcohol for mm -hmm. a long time. Like I really, that's not, but anger is still an issue that will kind of creep up. And thankfully I have men in my life, other elders that are, you know, speaking into my life in our yeah. church. But I still, that's still a battle. And sometimes I think it can be overlooked or even uh, people will say things like, well, that's just CJ's personality or he just is yeah, an yeah. or And we kind of make mm. excuses for a lot of these sins that aren't like the the ones that are going to get your name in the paper necessarily. Yeah. You know what I mean, you, you tell me, talk to me. I mean, well, I don't thoughts? think you, can, you can't help it because you're Irish, right? You get angry. All right. Scottish, <laughs> Irish, right. Scottish, both. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, people, people will say people, things like yeah. that. Yeah, things like that. What do you guys think in your churches? <laughs> do, you, do you see that kind of we get a free pass on some of these sins, but drugs and alcohol or stuff like that, not so much? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody even at church yesterday said to me, you know, we're not doing the big sins in our church. Like, you know, and she named the big, big stuff. But she said, we still struggle with the little things and what we're talking about now. And uh, and she had sat in, I'm teaching these verses, the lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And I'm showing how, it, you know, how little it can be. And I think you guys, it's convicting hearing you guys talk about this because do I arrest and take captive those thoughts that are quote unquote, little ways that I'm really not thinking about the godliness, you know, the holiness of God and, yeah. and not, not trying to be whole, whole godly in my small thinking that will lead me to bigger things down the road. And I think, you yeah. know, we, we always hear about leaders that fall when they fall in the big way, but yeah. nobody yeah. really yeah. arrested these. They gave them a pass, like CJ said on the yeah. little ones. Yeah, I think so. You know, and, you know, and scripture talks about that, you know, get rid of bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander, you know, you know, clothe yourself with humility, you know, things of that nature, you know. Uh, so, you know, those things that we have to continually do, even as believers, you know, you know, be gentle, you know, gentle and you know, all that, you know, are we gentle? Are we humble? You know, pride is another one, you know, and it can be masqueraded as, you know, a godly ambition. You know, and again, you know, that's where people struggle, right? It's like the Bible speaks about sometimes people are just working because it's pride, right? It's what drives me. You know, right. why do I want to do well? Is it so people see me, right? It, it can be, yeah. You know, hearts are, you know, deceptive. Sin is deceptive, and Satan is a deceiver. So we have, you know, three enemies there that uh, can certainly delude us. So we do have to be careful, you know, you know, being kind. So it's not only the sins of commission. How about the sins of omission? Ooh, we right. don't want to talk right. about that. No, no, let's forget it. We don't want to talk yeah. about those. Let's move on. Well, that's where I was going, 1 Corinthians 13. Okay, there you go. It's funny. I was patient. I was the verse ahead of it because something you said, Lou, yeah. you, you know, we're thinking we're in the same. I don't know if that's good for you or not, but yeah. we're Thinking, thinking alike same. here. Yeah. If I deliver up my body to be burned, there but have go. not love, I've gained nothing. Like wow. you wow. can deliver your body to be burned without love. Wrong motive. Think about that. Yeah. Wrong I mean, you would think that's a noble thing to do, but I can do right thing. Lou Priolo taught me that. 
Yeah. You know, about um doing good things but with a wrong heart. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we have to be careful of our internal dialogue. We're sloppy. Amen. Because we're so focused. It's, it's sort of like a blame shifting. So, you know, you'll see it with a husband and wife, you'll see it with children and parents and vice versa, even close friends mm -hmm. sometimes. But sometimes we do it with the world. <laughs> Interesting enough. We shift, right? It's it's the world is so bad and we minimize our set because of that. Because we just keep our eyes on I, I often think people love yes. the news so much because it makes them feel better. You know, yeah. I'm not that bad. <laughs> That's right. Right. Compared to them, right? I'm pretty good. But you know, in the church sometimes yeah. it's the most dangerous. Hey, my pastor just did that. You know, my uh you know, the elder in the church. Well, the deacons are doing that. They don't seem to have mm -hmm. a problem with it. Well, maybe they should. You know, so I think uh, Jerry Bridges is hitting on something. I think Brad Bigney did a, a study on that, too. I'm sure many people have, but I think it's a good topic. Yeah, the, it is. It's, it's an important thing because, like you said, it's the little thing, things that lead up to the, the big things. And we only say little big. Really, that's a misnomer. It's all big. Yeah. It, it all yeah. costs Jesus his life. And right, so yeah. whether somebody's listening right now and they're like, I'm just struggling with, you know, little things. Well, those little things sent Jesus to the cross, you know, yeah, and so yeah. all sin, it's sin. Amen. It does have different yeah. consequences. We get right. that. That's yeah. important. Different consequences. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's important. It's important. That... Sin, CJ's sin is worse than mine. Yes. Most, I mean, most likely. But that's, I, I'm the, yeah, most likely. But here's the thing, you know, really, though, let's talk, let's, let's just be honest, even amongst the three of us. What comes to your mind in your own life that is a hmm. sin that you that you sometimes treat as, even though we know that there is no respectable sins, but we have, each of us have a couple or more that we sometimes make peace with a little bit and kind of treat as respectable. So I'll start with you, Lou. I'm I'm, oh, look I'm at the time. Solid. We're out of I'm time. Oh, look at the I'm time. Solid mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I was going to throw it to Lou, and then I'm like... <laughs> Hey, we'll just go out of time here. We just, want, just, yeah, just we go, we don't have time to answer that question. Keep going, keep going. I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll put Please. myself on the chopping block. All right. Discontentment okay. is yeah. is number one. Mm. The sin of discontentment. Mm. For me, uh, that's probably there's always I'm always kind of looking for more. There's just it's there's got to be more, and I and I'm not. I'm not as grateful as I ought to be in the moment. And I'm always just kind of looking for that next thing to kind of dive into. So discontentment would be big. And, and another one would be uh, patience. Ang you could put anger in those. And it, even though it's not a lot of times something that everybody sees outwardly, inwardly, I have moments where like, man, my thoughts kind of, of like anger, like when I'm irritated by something someone says, or in the heat of a moment, even though I may not say it out loud in my heart, I'm like, not in a good spot. You know, I'm thinking things that I should not be thinking <laughs> in this yeah, situation. Yeah. And I don't immediately yeah, that. take that thought captive like I ought to. So those would be mine, right? I'm sure there's more. If my wife right. was sitting here, she'd be like, well, what about this? What about that? What? Uh, well, that, we all <laughs> yeah. have a multitude of them, right? Yeah. Right. At certain times. Yeah. But I think that's I'm why we don't that. that's why we don't have wives on our podcasts. That's right. That's why we don't Amen. allow wives. Hey. <laughs> no. No. I think I'm no, I No, I'll go next. Uh, my okay. pastor, yeah. my pastor at, at the new church, Spencer Harmon, has helped me to see two things for me. One, he preached a sermon about grumbling, and you mentioned that right off the top, Lou, is the, the grumbling, complaining. Um, he, he was in Philippians chapter two and preaching about that. Do you know, don't do anything with, with grumbling. And I thought, man, you know, that's hard. And the other day I, he asked me how something was going. And I said, I want to grumble to you right now, but I know I can't, so I'm not going to. And it, and it forced me to think about it in God's perspective. Because I think grumbling is me thinking about it in my perspective. And like you said, CJ, about discontentment being a root of, the, you know, be, you know, discontentment breeds a lot of sins. Yes. And so grumbling is one of those that flows out of that. That's the kind of the connection line, you know, that these are 
like railroad cars. The second thing was I was in a situation where I needed help and I didn't ask for help. And I didn't ask for help because of pride. Mm. I didn't want anybody to know I needed help. And uh, and I'm I'm the older guy on our staff team. I want to, well, now we've just added an older guy. He's a little older than me, so praise the Lord for that. Um, but I, I just feel like, you know, man, I don't want to ask the young guys for help. Like, like they have, you know, I mean, I want to be the one that helps these guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not that way. Where I'm on the team, I need to ask for help. And I ask for help from them a lot. I mean, especially technology kind of stuff. But, um, but they're great guys, and they're willing to help. They love me so well. I feel so loved on this team. But he said, Mark, you've got to ask for help. We don't know when you don't, when you, when you need something. And so that's just pride, pride of life to be, you know, I don't want anybody to know I'm weak and I'm needy, but uh, I have limitations and I'm weak and needy. And I've been saying that to audiences around the country the last few weeks, telling them you're weak, you're needy, you're dependent, you have limitations. And people don't like to hear that. So, Lou, I imagine in your 13-week uh, teaching yeah. on this kind of topic, yeah. Yeah. you heard a lot of that pushback. A lot of pushback. Anxiety. Anxiety is another one, right? So, uh, mm-hmm. But, it, you know, in regards to me, I don't want to kind of brush you off uh, in regards to me. But in the sense of, uh, yeah, I think ungratefulness and forgetting my dependence. Like, like, you know, if you ask me mm. theologically, I know I can't take my next breath without the Lord. Well, I can forget sometimes. And preparing a sermon. Am I praying? You know, I hear, you know, I should be praying throughout it. And sometimes I'm not. You know, things of that. Nature, I think yeah. that's a big issue. Um, and then trusting that God is going to answer. Mm. Right. That expectancy, I, I think, sometimes is definitely an area I struggle with. But. Yeah, I think uh, people push back, you know, but anxiety was one I remember talking about. Um, and people say, well, you know, that's isn't it, isn't it right to be anxious sometimes? That kind of thing. Or maybe it's anxious to be, mm-hmm. it's okay to be anxious a little bit in the beginning and then you deal with it. Well, I said, if it's, if it's not right in the long term, it's probably not right anytime. Now, we fall into it and you certainly don't want to stay anxious. You want to, you know, you cast your anxieties upon him. Or it gets for you, but it's still wrong, right? It's still wrong when we're anxious. So yeah, I think that um, you know, respectable sins is something that it really goes down deep. It really makes people think. And I did find out that you know, people, certain people, come up to me and say, "This, I've been really deep. This is really, you know, something that I'm struggling with, and I'm realizing what's going on within my heart more than I did before." Complaining again, uh, we do it about the weather. What are we saying? God, this is not acceptable. You know, this is not good enough. <laughs> right. So I, I remember. Although I've said that less in Florida. I've said that less in Florida yeah. than I, I have in Wait Kentucky. till the summer. Wait till the summer. Come. Wait till it gets up really hot. Or Iowa. Or Iowa. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we no, do a lot. you know. We, we've done a lot of grumbling about the weather up here lately, especially some of the tornadoes and stuff. that. Have yeah, it gets hard. It's, yeah, it's, that's been devastating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's what's hard hard about it. Like, we want to be honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. about we don't like the weather or we don't, you know, and the tragedy yeah. like of the course. tornadoes and stuff. Yeah. We want to be honest. But at the same time, we have to we have to speak it in a way that it honors God. Yeah. And isn't grumbling against God is what you're mm-hmm. talking about, Lou. I think so. Yeah. Um, I think so. You know, and so there, there's I've been I've been working lately, and when I say working on it, it's been two days now. But I've been working lately on um say the same thing that I'm thinking, but in a different way that reflects, you know, honoring God. It, it's funny, my wife, so my wife is an editor, you know, and the reason I have so many books is I my wife. That. To write is human. <laughs> to write is human. To edit is divine. Yes. So my wife's the divine part of it. But she corrected me the other day. I said something about I forgot something. She said you didn't forget. You just didn't remember. And I thought, you know, that's that's deep. <laughs> like I didn't forget it. I just wasn't actively remembering something. It was it was still in there. I hadn't forgotten it. Mm-hmm. I just hadn't remembered it. I hadn't been active with it. You know what I mean? 
Um, the difference in that does that make sense, CJ? What I'm yeah. saying? Oh yeah, you didn't you didn't remember to make it a priority. Mm -hmm. Whatever it yeah. was. And I know. said, oh, I forgot, but I really didn't forget. It's That's in there. I just wasn't actively prioritizing it. Right. Yeah. I think words, in uh words in lamentations, matter. Yeah. In words lamentations, matter. it says, For this I call to mind. Therefore I have hope. And it's interesting. It's that aspect of calling it to mind, like it's there. Like I have a shovel in my shed. It's there. I know it's there, but I still have to get it. I right. think that's kind of what you're saying. It's in there. Yeah. I just have to draw it out. Yes. And yeah, as you get older, it's right. harder to get it out. Yeah. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. The verse we taught, we started off with the, in First John 2, 16 in particular, the lust of flesh, lust of the pride of life. I teach it as to do, to have, and to be. And we, when you think about it, we're not all that complicated. Everybody no. thinks, oh, it's so complicated. No, You've already listed, like, if you're a controlling person and you're worried about controlling things, you're going to be anxious. Like, yeah. anxiety is going to be tied to that. Yeah. So you're showing us, biblically, there's a link there to anxiety and, and these respectable sins. But yeah. when I talk about to do, to have, and to be, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, to do, I want to experience pleasure and do things that are fun. To have, I want to possess things. And to be, I want to be seen by, by people as, you know, and you can fill in the blank in a lot of different ways. It could be, uh, I want people to see me as wise or funny or handsome or, you know, on and on and on. And for 10 people, it'll be 10 different things. But to do, to have, and to be is really it. And when mm -hmm. Jesus was tempted by Satan in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, he was tempted in those three ways, to do, to have, and to be. And then the Bible says in, in Hebrews 4, 4, 14 through 16, you can see I've been teaching this a lot. It, it says Jesus was tempted in all ways, yet without sin. And what I tell people is like, was Jesus ever tempted to shoot heroin in his arm? Well, how mm -hmm. can he be tempted in all ways? But mm -hmm. the all ways are those three things yeah. listed in 1 John 2, 16, and Matthew 4 and Luke 4, where he's tempted to do, to have, and to be. And that's really what we're all about. We want to do things, we want to have good things, point. and we want to be seen by others in, in a certain way. Yeah, yeah, it's good, yeah. Yeah, we want to put self first. Right. right at and, the bottom and, of it, right? Yeah, yeah. We want to be God. Right. You know, right. <laughs> that's seen, that's, that's God. right. Yeah, we're self-dependent, you know, you know, we don't, we, you know, independent right. people, we don't need God, we don't need, you know, we want, we want what we want, when we want it, right? It's not all these complicated things and issues. He's getting to the root of it in biblical counseling yeah. and addressing complicated, all these issues and all these things in life. But um, we, we had somebody come to our house yesterday, an unbeliever. And I said to her, you know, I said to her something, I, I don't want to give too many details, but she, yeah. we were, you know, we moved, we're giving her boxes and, you know, and all that. And on Facebook Marketplace and all that kind of stuff. And I said something to her, it really made her mad, but it was, um, she just really doesn't know God. And uh, and I didn't even mean to, yeah. but it was so sad to me. And I thought, you know, all the stuff going on in her life, if she has a proper view of God, she'll be okay, you know, but she doesn't. And when I said that, it revealed it. She got mad, got in the car and left. Really? Um, but I didn't, I really wasn't trying, she, I didn't take it personally. I think she's mad at God, but I was trying mm. to like say God is good, you know, because he is good, not just because he's good to me. He is love. He is good. And, and I was uh, trying to explain that to her mm. and help her to see it. She yeah. didn't want to see it right now because she's angry at God. Oh. And um, and so there's all these complications, all this stuff she talked about in her life. But when you shuck it down, it comes down to a, a, an improper belief. Mm. CJ, what were you going to say till I interrupt you? No, no, you're good. No, this goes CJ. hand in hand because really this does, th th this passage in 1 John just exposes <coughs> yeah. even us as believers mm. that we still fall into loving the world. Like, yeah. like cause we say, well, when, when yeah. it says don't love the world, we're like, well, yeah, we're we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? We're, we're Christians that are, yeah, we're not about the world. But the reality is, is we fall into this and he, like, because when it says desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, we all still fall into this. And we yeah. need to be reminded, and this is what John is doing when he says, the world is passing away along with all its desires. 
but whoever does the will of mm-hmm. God abides Amen. forever. Yeah, it's so true. So th- th- we need to be reminded because this is still a problem for you and I. And I think that sometimes though we we hear things like, you know, like I hear you see even on Facebook, me on social media, you see Christians that will mm-hmm. quote these verses and they'll kind of use it and especially in the political realm and they'll talk about these things. Hey, you're not supposed to love the world. And then it's like, okay, this is primarily uh, this John is talking to believers here. Yeah. This, yeah. this is this yes. word is for us. Because we fall into Mm -hmm. this and we're the ones that are supposed to be the light of the world, right? We're supposed to be, we're we're supposed to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world and pointing people to Christ by the way we speak and the way we live. And sometimes we don't look Mm -hmm. a lot. Sometimes even in our churches, our churches get infected by the world, right? And, yeah, yeah. And in yes. the worldly ways are, I mean, you see it all the time where we cave. And so again, what's, and I, I, I don't want to hijack this by any means, because I'm sure there's more to say, but I know <laughs> first, when I think of what's the remedy, where's our hope? Amen. It's first, it's first John two. It's, the, yeah, yeah. The, it's, it's verses one and two. Yeah. It's verses one and two. Can I read it? I've already hijacked it. Haven't I, Mark? I get excited sometimes. Yeah, do it. <laughs> but so it says, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. So he doesn't want us to sin. He's like, eh, he doesn't, he knows it's going to lead to bad places. But if anyone does sin, which we will, and we mm. we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. And propitiation is just a, it's a $10 word and it's a great word, but it really just means appeasement. It means that Christ came to appease the wrath of God for us on our behalf. And not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So that's the remedy. Mm -hmm. Remedy is we run to Christ. He's our advocate. Amen. We're going to fall short. We're going to fall into the, we're going to have, we're going to struggle with respectable sins and they're not respectable. That's the, yeah. whole they're not, there are yeah. no respectable sins. Yeah. And, and, and you know, when he, when he writes that book, respectable sins and underneath says the sins that believers tolerate, you know, obviously respectable with quotes, right? Yes. They're not really respectable, but I was just thinking about that passage. And then it says right. this at the end in verse 17, that uh, first First John 2, uh, 17, the world is passing away along with its desires, mm. you know, and then what does the will of God abides forever, but it's passing. You know, a lot of times we're grasping at things that aren't going to last. Right. Amen. You know, it, it's, it's an amazing thing, you know, that uh, to yes. have that eternal perspective, mm-hmm. to have that biblical perspective, long-term perspective, as opposed to trying to satisfy our souls you know from the things of the world around us you know Mm -hmm. so and then the end of you know first john uh last verse little children keep yourself from idols oh i love that right talking about who's he writing to little children talking to believers right Right. Mm -hmm. so what's what's gonna stop us from abiding in christ and really being close to him idols yes as yes. calvin said yeah. well, the human heart is an idol factory right yes it is. yes and we know it yeah. we know mm-hmm. it in our own hearts yeah not only does scripture you know scripture definitely testifies to that reality but our own hearts do too every day <laughs> yes yeah. yes so the battle is real right the world the flesh and the devil right you know once yeah uh, i I'm more and more convicted lately of the the little respectable, like you said in quotes. Yeah, I love yeah, that. yeah. I'm, I'm because I think it's the little things, not paying attention to the little details of yeah. sin in my own heart, that's going to lead me to, you know, I'm going to bury something that I need to speak and say something about early on, and I'm mm-hmm. going to bury it, bury it, bury it, and it's going to explode. Um, all this kind of stuff. And so God, God loves us. He, he's our Abba father, you know, like you talked about CJ, the, 
we're little children and and just resting these things, taking these thoughts captive more and more. This is so good. I mean, to think about because we we just kind of gloss over the the little sinful things that we do and think, well, at least I'm not doing drugs anymore. At least I'm not, you know, and that's not it at all. God wants us in every moment to honor and and worship and think about his holiness. You know, it's funny because, it, you know, like in Isaiah 6, holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Emphasize three times the holiness. He's other than us. Amen. And so what what's happening is when I have these thoughts, these little quote unquote respectable sins, quote unquote, I'm I'm forgetting the holiness of God. And in that moment, thinking really I'm God, like you guys have been talking about. This is this is really important. And you think about addiction counseling, you know what you're doing, CJ, in a residential program. These guys are in the program mm -hmm. and um they're not doing drugs. So they're they're feeling pretty good and they're like, you know. But are they arresting these tiny little thoughts and these things? And then yeah. you see a guy go back out and he relapses. And it's like he hasn't really learned to take those thoughts captive. And which ones are are take captive worthy, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, the, it's the sins beneath the sins, right? Oh, but I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. It is. It's yeah, just yeah. Like layers. So well, do you find that yeah. you guys find that, that uh, unless you deal with those underlying Right. I know you guys do because because I certainly uh, I know you guys, but it lets you deal with that self pity because I often tell people, and whether porn yeah. or drugs, what were you thinking before yeah. before you did that? You went out and oh, oh my boss, you know, he doesn't appreciate me. Uh, my boss yelled at me. Okay. Yeah. What was what was going on in your heart though? Right. But that's that's the circumstance. Right. What's going on within you? What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. What's brewing within your mind? Yeah. It's the most dangerous place is always often our minds. Right. Right? That's why yeah. we have to take every thought captive, right. make it obedient to Christ. Right. So if you don't get to that, but people, right. and I, this, I, I found this, a lot of times people don't know what they're thinking. Right. No. Sounds right. crazy. Sounds right. nuts, right? But they don't. They're not realizing mm -hmm. what they're dwelling on, mm -hmm. but they just, mm -hmm. they just look at the circumstance. And then they maybe look at what they did, yeah. but they don't really, you know, they're not connecting the dots. No, they'd rather, That's, they're following their heart a lot of times. Yeah. You yeah. know where that leads. Which is being yeah. fed by my thinking. I deserve. Right. Lust of the eyes, yeah, pride of life. I can't believe they treated me this way. I was so nice to them. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Instead of saying, mm -hmm. "That's good," I can't believe how Christ has treated me. Right. Mm. I was thinking recently. When somebody I felt was being unreasonable or not treating me, I said, well, let me look at how Christ treats me. That's you got to get the vertical hmm. before you can really deal rightly in the horizontal. We could go all day, but that's this is good. Yeah. And Lou, I, yeah. I can tell, I mean, you're you're such a good biblical counselor. You're there in New York. Um, it's a big state, big city. CJ's Iowa. I'm in Florida now. And so we're kind of spread out. But I could I could confidently send anybody, and I have in, in over the past, to you for biblical help because you're getting to the root issue. And so I really appreciate that, and thank you for addressing the heart um, of all of this. I want to end on this proverb, 1724. And it might not, for some people might say, you know, where's the connection here? But Proverbs 1724, the discerning sets his face toward wisdom but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. You know, I love the book of Proverbs, so I, yes. I hang out there a lot. But the um, the discerning sets his face toward wisdom, but the eyes of a fool are the ends of the earth. And you mentioned that earlier, Lou, with like all the distractions, politics, yeah. and all the things that we, we look to on this planet to fix it. Yeah. And those are externalities. God wants yeah. to deal with the internality of our hearts. Yeah. Amen. In light of that, the world is passing away from yeah. First John. So why wouldn't we? This is where we yes. need to end up. That to the eyes of the fool okay. are on the ends of the earth. I don't want to be a fool, right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for being part of the Addiction Connection family, Lou. It's good to have yeah. you back. Great to get. Great to be here. Appreciate being on the podcast. We'll turn it around soon and get it out there tonight, so it may be live tonight. That's our hope. So okay, this one will, we're going to start. Yeah. 
start going again and we'll get you on again. Yeah. You, Thank you guys you. are a blessing. I appreciate you both, man. You too, brother. Thank you. All right. Take care and God bless. God bless, God bless you guys. God bless. Have a great day, man. Yeah. God bless you guys. God bless, brother.